Sin. Lee Sin. Okay. All right. Um, well, that is definitely a choice you can make in game number one. Of course, this is Ona's most famous champion by a country mile. And something that... Uh, now, because Zayas got the push in, he's going to come down, so Weiwei's going to have to back off. He could look for the 50-50, but he risks putting himself in danger. So it should be Owner grabbing the wolf, and they can continue this pressure on. You can look towards mid now, oh. as Xiao is in trouble. Yeah, Owner immediately moves over. There's the flex. The Q's going to land from Owner, but he decides to not go in under the inner turret, and Xiao looks to try and fire back. This is just great stuff early on here from T1. Owner, three camps top, moves into the enemy jungle to cover Zayas on the push, then uses Zayas' pressure to move down, steal the wolves, rotates over towards mid where Faker has that, now into a bot side scuttle. This is really clean, really well pre-planned play here from T1. And I'm gonna be looking towards how are the junglers able to punish the oh, lack of flashes. Flash w is fake against the charm. He stops it to the skies, but I don't think it's going to be enough because his flash is already down. And first blood goes to Xiaohu. And I haven't even finished this dragon. So that is one of the steps that they have taken here. Still, they're going to need those be incredible throughout the World Championship. Certainly has. And now Faker is going to dash in, finds the charm under the Tom Kench. Faker has to get out of there, though. Can't be a snare for the hostile takeover. Gets so much work done. The devour in for the kills there. But oh no, Xiaohu now going down low as Faker dashes forward once again. But it looks like they'll have to settle for one and a Herald. And Weibo, they see that T1 is at the Herald. They rotate over, and I think they try to recuperate. But that's uh, sunken cost fallacy because they just walk up T1 finds the angle, and Weibo give up the Herald and a kill. Exactly, and maybe going to lose some farm down on bot side as well, because Chris has no TB, but Zayas. Nature's Grass comes in, he gets pulled back, he's interrupted from the ultimate. Zayas does get a knock up there and a shield, but I think he's still dead. And there it is, the answering kill from the shield. Cryo down on that bot side, move up through the river. And with Karia and Guma, at such a strong point early on in the game. Immediately, oh, Azalea, you'll love to see it. Uh, owner is here though, it's going to be a 2v2. Zayas taking a bit of damage as the Q comes down. There's the ulti. Nature's Grasp, but look at the knockups, the kickback. Weiwei punches him out of oh! the Dawning Shadow flying through to help get the kill on. Incredibly impressive to interest. The Shy might be getting ganked. Yeah, Kerry is going to move on up here as Zayas is going to break those chains. Kerry is looking for that handshake. Angle is already the Shy has done a fair bit of damage, but I don't think it is going to be enough as it's Alco gaming for the Shy and he will go down. Ona grabs that kill. Dying there with no TP does mean there's going to be a pretty big push. You can see Guma, of course, yeah. you have to carry, compare that with Crisp's goal. Oh, brings him back in with a twisted advance, the kickback as well as Weiwei gets out the punch, and now Xiaohu coming on in, Ona's going to burn down, and no bailout for you. Light's in a bit of trouble, but the charm is not going to get it done because Crisp is there with the, den the denial with the devourer. And T1 have to run away. What a play from Weibo. And continuously, they are <laughs> getting out skirmished. Weiwei should be able to get the execute here. So nothing given up. Coming towards the dragon, they can just drop Harold mid and guarantee that tier one. Oh, Carry is going to miss the handshake, but the Q's gonna land from Ona. Wait, wait, could avoid it with a twisted advance. Ona not going to go in as the Everfrost, it gets the devour. Gumiushi getting himself out of there and utilizing his ultimate to save Carrier as push well. mid, but it looks like Weibo isn't even going to give him the opportunity. It's oh, no! Oh, there's the kick flash. Shao is going to be pushed into Faker the flash forward, but the charm is going to miss. What? The Pierce doesn't land it. Shao just walks it up. No worries there at all as Crisp is under the turret. They throw down Harold, but Zayas has found two with the ultimate light. Goes down so low, but isn't going to survive. Weiwei trying to get himself out of there, and the Shy is given up on. Weiwei running the wrong direction, but they at least get the dragon. Weibo get the dragon, but T1 get the kill. Shahu lucky to get out of that one, but Weiwei, he's going home in the body bag. And, and you can see a lot of these towers that they've been pressing. If you look on live, Faker taking down that top tier one. A lot He's such a menace in the side lane. Exactly, it's incredibly difficult to deal with him. They become incredibly tanky. And one of the most underrated parts about this is how tanky it actually makes the cannon minions. They become very difficult to actually wave clear out. It allows oh, you to harass your opponent, but Guma. Go be in a bit run. of trouble here as Crisp looks for it. The immediate cleanse does get out of the way. Nature's Cross isn't going to connect, but there is a twisted advance. Hostile takeover across everyone, though, but the Shy is just gigantic. Guma trying to hop away. The Fates call the knockups. And meanwhile, Weiwei is going down. Baker collects it before falling down. Crisp has to go, though, because he's so incredibly low. And Zayas is tearing them to shreds. Weibo lying on the floor now as T1 look to tidy up Crisp. And they won that team fight even better than the loss. Guma refuses to go down. Karia saves him. Coming in with the hostile takeover in T1. 
there on the Baron. And it's Renata that does it again. Keria standing at the ready, keeps Guma alive throughout all of it. And T1, the goal before this was even Wavo picked up the dragon, but after this fight, multiple go uh, kills going over the T1. Baron secured. And it looks like so the much out of these last couple plays. They're going to try to take a tier one top. A figure's looking for an engaged bot. Yeah, looking for even more. Everfrost is going to land. Somehow that charm didn't connect, but it is still going to gather a devour from over the wall from Crisp. T1 will settle for this inner turret. And this is where the earlier Drake from Weibo is going to feel like a miracle in the sky. Right? If they didn't have that, it would be just a soul point in addition to all the try and get something going. My main issue is, particularly with Zayus now completely back in themselves, a little bit of extra standing gold in a turret. Not exactly the end of the world, but it's all just more money here for the coffers of T1. Damage. Cloud Drake. Yeah. And he is just gonna kill that thing so fast. They're gonna start Baron at the same time. They're just gonna start it up. I think at this point, T1 feel that they can do everything at once. And Weibo, you've got to make a stand now. There's just no way from this position you can give up a free Baron. Well, Weiwei is in the vicinity, but the rest of the team is still making their way over. The Shy does have teleport, but they have no information. They have no vision. This Baron is gone. This can't walk up. There's not really Finger anything to do. Yeah, looking for the angle. It's not exactly behind Xiaohu, but he's pretty fast as Shao's going to avoid the charm for now. Shock Blast connects onto Faker there as well. He's still going to look for that reset angle, and now with the Baron buff in tow, T1 feel like they don't need a reset to try and break open the base of Weibo here in game one of the finals. Nature's Grasp flying forward. Ona still has that GA, oh. remember? Chris going down so incredibly. Loseus just executes the Chai up to the side, and there is another one. This guy's Yone is just absurd. And the inhibitor is going to go down. Weiwei is burning there as well. As now Xiao who tries to be the hero, but it does not work out. And I think T1 are just going to end game one here. And the early game, T1 not able to get a bunch of crucial kills, but they don't let it face them. They are able to find the one skirmish they're looking for, take the Baron, and from that point on, wait. For the Ari here. Yeah, so the Ari is going to be locked in. Is that an insta-lock? Okay, there we go. So the Gwen going to be locked in here for Zeus. Something that has been picked into him in the past, but I, I won't uh, won't talk about it too much if you are. Drake should mean the scuttle here as well from Weiwei. He's getting double duty done. And they are going to be able to grab this off the back of their very, very, very supreme control of this bottom lane. Yeah, this all goes back to the level one. Uh, Light and Crisp playing it out early on very, very well. And one of the things that we haven't really talked about yet uh, that the Draven can struggle with is not having a jungler that can enable you. As I say, that owner is in top. Yeah, Zayas dashing forward. The needlework is out. Snip, snip. Going to connect, but doesn't do too much. And in goes Ona. The flash oh! out oh, was incredible from the Shy. Ona oh! gets taken down. To, oh my goodness, about one health, but will be able to walk away. But I don't think he's going to be excited about ganking the Shy anytime soon. Although Zayas is just going to go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, he eat in, right? You could just stay at your tower and farm it up. He didn't want to lose the wave, but he's the one who goes aggressive. Now he's going to get zoned off the bot wave, so T1 Whoa. punishing so heavily here. Yeah, the flash forward from Carrier finds the handshake this time. The Infernal Chains come in. He's lit on fire. He's feared, and Kumayushi cashes in. It's the Shy getting way down in this game now as Weibo have their bot lane up top. Zayas will not be an easy dive here. He is healthy and he's got the ultimate back. They're going to look for it, though. Yeah, we'll see what he can get done here. The Flash Twisted Advance comes in. And now Zayas just trying to do what he can to stay alive. It's working! And he's going to be able to dash back towards the minions. Now Faker turns up. He's got his own nature's grasp. But Xiaohu is going to join this one. And Zayas is running the wrong direction. We'll see how much time he's going to be able to buy here. Because maybe this is an execute as he heads toward the turret. And there it is! Oh! Oh my god, everything is going T1's way. It's the Shy. Now shows up in his third lane. Top lane didn't work. Bot lane. We know it's not going to be a Chemtech oh. Soul, so it should be a good one. Yeah, and it's also going to be a teleport in T1. Not wanting to give this one up as Faker turns up. Nature's Grasp going to guarantee the Dragon the hostile takeover. Five and not been able to claim that big title they've been chasing, but Zayas showing up so far. Yeah, another teleport to come in here as they do manage to secure this Rift Herald. We'll see whether Weibo can get themselves out of here. Light gonna be hostile takeover, but he's the only one, and now Zayas looking for the target. Faker dives in though as well. He's gonna collect the first with the help of Ona. The Side. Get even more gold in their pockets prior to it. Snip, 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 and oh down goes God. the turret. That is the first one of the Ooh. game. He is looking completely unanswerable. He is so far ahead. And the majority of metrics right now as the Rift Herald is going to park itself in the mid lane immediately that turret bot lane should be answered and there goes the charge. 
So T1, Argon. Crisp going to be spotted, but he does put that ward down. That is going to get there. The Drake going down very, very low, and now the paranoia comes in. Baker looks for the spear rush, and he does find it. The hostile takeover is massive as they get rid of Light immediately. Weiwei taken down for the double kill for Ona. Xiaohu now trying to get some damage in the back, and it does take down the Nocturne, but it's Chris fighting on the bottom side of the map for Kumiuchi. In this game. And it's again, I think, that sense of desperation. They don't have a great vision set up. They don't know from which angles T-O oh, badly yeah. this early game started. He has been cashing in and Weibo trying yeah. to start something here. Here's another one, the Nature's Grass. They all line up behind, but it's a decent charm to come through there. Hostile takeover for some phenomenal disengage. And it looks like T1, they don't want to deal with it. Faker dashes over the wall. Remember, they don't have a turret here. The charm is going to split them. Carrier tries to get the oh. He goes forward and then just explodes. And then Ona thinks that that's his moment. It's a double again for this Nocturne, and he survives. In game number two. It's really hard as well, considering the fact that T1 had already built themselves a 1-3-1 composition. There is no comp in the game. Things like Lee Sin. I think that has been somewhat indicative of what T1 have wanted to do here at Worlds. And the meta shifts that they have brought in as owner, maybe looking for a fight, being able to see these iconic picks, and their comfort is working out so well. Oh, paranoia comes in once again as the flash out from the Shy may not be enough. They're under the turret. Ona was tanking it up. And Zayas is going to finish it in a turret. Should now be next on the clock. And because the rest of T1 is standing guard, Weibo can't try. First, it becomes very hard to contest. And right now, that's not the case. Yeah, they're definitely not there first. The Baron is down very, very low. There's the paranoia as they look to try and burst down the Baron. They do collect it. And now the hijacked ultimate comes through from Baker. Now Zayas dives in. He's taken matters into his own hands. He hasn't taken any damage. Weibo has to run away. He gets thrown back by the Bramble Smash, but the damage is already being done. Baker goes gold and does have to flash as Light's doing a fair bit of work with these Rens into the back line. But T1 just took a Baron, they got five out. And in character necessarily, he's just been able to sit back. It's because of the Cloud Drakes! The presses are, you don't know how many people are coming, you don't know how many people are responding, and T1, they're looking for more. Yep, Shahu already taking a bit of poke damage. Light will turn up. As four members are here, teleport event not available for the shy, but they dive in. The turret goes down, the needlework just rips the center to shreds. And Zayas just by himself destroying everyone. Hostile takeover comes in, Light has the cleanse, but you can't cleanse death. It's a triple kill for Zayas, and they'll get to work on the inhibitor. It might just be the game right here. Zayas playing like his namesake. Oh God, this guy is going crazy in the finals. Just and extraordinary as this helps clear up this second Nexus turn and T1 at match point already. Been playing out of his mind this entire series, and we'll have to see if it's going to work for them. But I respect Weibo taking a big pivot here, right? They go towards Comfort with the Azir. They go towards something very different in the top side with the Kennen Belveth for him. And he did just use his Lightning Rush, so I think he's in trouble. Yeah, there's the Flash Q3 from Zayas. The Shy is in trouble. The Lightning Rush is on cooldown. He gets slowed down by the Cripple, and the Q's going to land. Ona secures it, and that is first. To get out of that long lane. And... We will see if Weiwei is able to maybe make a play towards bot side as owner making his way over to mid. Yeah, it's gonna safeguard forward there as Faker dashes in and Xiaohu will survive. Faker just barely managing to walk away Whoa. as now they come in. Oh, the grand entrance, phenomenal from Kerry. We'll see whether he can survive though. Oh! He's trying to get out the piercing arrow will do it. And Crisp here, let's see whether they can get an angle. Three versus one, he does try and get out. There's the World Ender. He's trying to avoid all of this CC and it's not going to work. There's the kill for Weiwei. Ready, good. are gonna lose at least one plate bot, maybe two, and likely most of, if not all of this wave because he's totally zoned off until Chris arrives. So yes, they do get a kill on Toe, wanting to get a little bit of revenge. And even though First Blood came in, the try still has a CS advantage. Lightning Rush to get him out of there. Arizona just mini stun kick into the wall. That is going to be the execution, but the ultimate is gonna be there from the shine after the flash he will survive and now it's Weiwei's turn can he actually get this one as owner about 50 percent the safeguard to try and get out the oh. flash with the knockup it's still there and crisp comes in for the kill they get some knockups they as well as guma and Keria are so hard to attack in a lot of these situations oh q going to connect there nice little knockup as Keria tries to find it there's the quickness on to two the kick gets the knockup onto Xiaohu the Empress of Ida only gets owner but that will get him out but Weiwei's not going to be so lucky the shine he breaks the chains, but is he still going to be able to get out? Kumiyushi decides he wants to fight light towards the bottom side. That was the right call. Zayas grabs the double kill. And 
Weibo lose out on the fight? And while the laning setup is there this time around for Weibo, their early game looking a lot better. The skirmishes, they're still not able to make work, although Teleport coming in. Yeah, Teleport from this top side of the river. Xiaohu coming in, looking for the opportunity, doesn't have the ultimate. They secure the Drake, does T1. Grand Entrance not going to find the target there. On to Crisp as the Tempered Fate comes in. Faker trying to play Bouncer to keep his team alive. And the ultimate doesn't really work out here from Crisp. Now here, and Gumiushi pretty safe now on that back line. Look at Carrier though. It's so hard for Weibo to walk up because Carrier is on that sideline. They know he's there. Yeah, he flashes in. He finds himself. The charm on the four is there. It is the ultimate from the Shy, but it just doesn't quite do enough. They try and get out, but Faker has the perfect execution and locks down his fellow ninja. Xiaohu now taking a whole lot of damage in Faker. He's in the shroud. He's toying with him. It's a double cost. What? Order! And back in again. It's a triple for Faker. Zayas is going to be out of block down the next one. Faker eventually. They just can't. Like fishes with the Q, won't get it. It's T1, one game. He's been great in lane, has really been impressive in team fights, and it just feels like a rejuvenated Ooh. Faker. And he goes again, as now Ona looking for that opportunity as well. Backflip connects also as the perfect execution comes forward. Has he overstepped the answer? Is no, because he had the stopwatch anyway, and now the cavalry comes in. Chris, the next to go down, Weiwei. Wei. He's under a turret. Oh. He flashes on top. The lethal Aatrox going to get it done, and T1, they feel like it's barren time. It's the king at home. Respect the name. Faker, the greatest of all time. Styling on him in Seoul. And Light desperately trying to get something going here. Not going to be the case. He's not going to be allowed to because Faker wants to keep his whole oh. house alive as well, but it's not going to work out. He goes into the shroud. I don't know whether this is necessarily what you... The Already on their way. And this cannon, not in the greatest of spots, uses his ultimate only on Faker, stays alive. Three has not been able to claim that title. They are getting so damn close to it. When we were touting Gumiushi and Carrier as the greatest bottom lane in the world, it was when they were playing champions like this. As it's when one's going to get Soul, they're going to get the next Baron, and they're going to win the series in Carrier. Going to get knocked up here as Ona comes on over. He's here to protect his support. The quickness ties them all up, and Xiaohu going to be the next target. He finds two with the Emperor's Divide, but Crisp just evaporates. Weiwei Wei going to suffer the same fate as Zeus is on the warpath. Light able to sidestep, finds the Chains of Corruption, but there's not enough damage. Xiaohu decent flash to try and get himself out, but he's not out of the woods yet. And as Faker tidies up that kill, and they are just so far ahead. Ona secures light with a sonic wave, and the Shy finds himself alone heading back towards his base. That's the double kill. That's the clean ace for T1. And T1, Weibo try. They know they have to contest this dragon. They have to contest the soul. But they're not even given the opportunity. They thought they got Carrier, but Carrier says, come get me. And it looks to me like they're going to take this inhibitor and move back. It may not be the end of the series, but it might be the last moment that Weibo felt hope in it. As Crisp clearing out some control vision, Ona wants to grab himself a soul to finish this game off on. And T1 are just on fire. All five players in this final game here potentially playing out of their minds. They are five brains, one player. It's like every At least get Zeus. Oh. Won't even get that. It's heartbreaking as now they take a magical journey over Zeus. He likes this one though. One versus three. He's absorbing so much. The Empress Divide, it comes in, but he's still alive. What? He's going on Faker Tidy's up the first. Everyone's just exploding as Weiwei trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. Four times T1 has lost in a vein five. Four times they've been knocked out, and four times they have got back up for this moment. It was seven years since their last, a decade since their first. The SKT legacy has been reignited. T1 will be your 2023 world champions. It took them two years to win a title again. Spring 2021, this roster came up. They stomped the LCK. They stomped the... T1 finally hoisting it.
with the new name. SKT was their name when they had the first three, and now this team that so many adore will finally hoist the Summoner's Cup. And they've waited for it. Last year, the story wasn't about them. But this year it is. All the pent up emotion for this team, all the disappointment. The start of the winner interview. Top laner, Zeus. Zeus. This is the national team top laner. You were performing out of your mind today. How do you feel right now? We had a lot of ups and downs. We had so many hardships starting from last year. But I think this moment at Worlds repays everything. I thought I would be crying, but I'm not actually in tears. Today, your lane opponent was the shy. How was it? I was quite nervous. You know, I was pretty much worried as well. But the moment I started playing in front of so many fans here, I was not able to feel nervous. I was actually very confident, so I was able to pull off a decent performance. Thank you so much. Zeus, you won the gold medal at the Asian Games, and now you're you're a world champion. What is your plan or goal as a League of Legends professional player? I mean, I can say I achieved a lot of achievements this year, but at the same time, all the other players will step it up starting next year. So I want to say I want to enjoy the moment of being the best top winner until the end of this year, and I will keep grinding. Once again, congratulations. Now let's hear from T1's jungle owner. Finally, you managed to win your first world title. How do you feel? Over the course of three years, you know, it was not easy. You know, I was going through a lot of ups and downs, but in the end, I was able to lift up the trophy. It feels amazing. I really, really wanted to win worlds with the five players on T1's roster, and in the end, we made it. I don't know how things will turn out next year, but it just means a lot that we managed to win the world's trophy in the end, all together as a team. A great accomplishment by Zeus owner Faker, Kumayusi, and Kiria in the end. Owner, starting from quarterfinals, you guys were the last hope of the LCK. Did you feel extra burden? Not really, you know, it was happening in the in Korea and also all the other teams are really strong and talented anyway, so I was not worried about our opponents. I just tried my best to enjoy every moment and because of that, we were able to get such a great outcome today. Owner, how would you like to describe how you feel right now? Your interviews left so many great quotes. I mentioned this multiple times in previous interviews. You know, today we were able to finally bloom the prettiest, the most beautiful flower. After multiple setbacks and hardship, T1 finally bloomed at the best moment possible. Now let's hear from the mid laner of T1, the Faker, the unkillable Demon King. Faker, you wrote another history, four times champion. How do you feel? Feels great. Plus, I'm just happy that I got to play in front of such a big audience. You know, who we are playing up against doesn't matter. I'm always really grateful that I can perform on stage. Faker, earlier today in the matchup teaser, you mentioned the fourth 
Worlds title will be for my team. What does that exactly mean? Well, just like I said just now, I'm just happy that the people are happy by watching me perform, and I hope my teammates are also happy by playing together with me. So I wanted to just share joy and happiness with all the people around me. Then, Quaker, would you like to say anything to your teammates? Great job, everyone. I know you guys worked so hard for this moment. Thank you so much. Baker, you have proven yourself as a living legend by popping off in every game possible. And you said you keep wanna, you know, going on as a professional player. What is your plan as a professional player now that you achieved everything? You know, still, I learned so much from this matchup as well. So I just want to become a better and greater player. Lastly, anything you want to say to the fans? It's been so long since I lost one world, so it feels surreal right now. But I just want to say thank you to all the fans out there, and I will keep working hard for my fans. Thank you very much, Faker, and congratulations one more time. And now here, let's hear from Guma Yusi. You finally made it. You are the world champion. How do you feel? Oh, <laughs> feels good. Yeah, and amazing. I think it all came down to the bot lane matchup. How did you prepare the draft and comp today? Before I uh, answer to that question, can I add on to my first answer? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. How do you feel right now? Thank you, my dear Lord. And also, I want to say thank you to all the coaching staff, our GM, our COO, our manager, they worked so hard for us. I really appreciate their hard work. I don't think I was performing really well today, but my teammates, they're doing a great job, so we won the finals. It feels like a dream. I want to say thank you to everyone on the side of T1, especially Keria. And today, what was the key to the bot lane composition you, with you and Keria? I think we kind of um, showed everything we can do throughout our competition at World. So we knew uh, what we're going to do and also what potentially the opponents are going to do. So we were going through a lot of potential matches. And we were like, let's take this and let's kind of like deal with this picks if they take it. And you also mentioned that by seeing all the LCK and T1 fans doing good stuff to make you know T1 win worlds, you were also happy and could tell how desperate your fans are. Anything you want to say to them? So it was not easy. I, I know you. We ended up being a runner-up for like five, six times. Sometimes we even ended up on third place. I know our fans were really thirsty and desperate for this moment, but I want to say thank you so much for your continuous support. Now, let's hear from Keria, the support player on the side of T1. Congratulations on winning World Championship. Keria, you finally met new jeans, and you finally won Worlds. How do you feel? I'm happy that I got to see new jeans. I'm happy that I won Worlds. Right now, it feels unreal. I feel like I'm over the clouds, you know, I feel like I'm dreaming. I just keep thinking about all the process that we were working hard for this moment, you know, I'm really happy, but also I'm just feeling nostalgic about, you know, the three years that we spent together for this moment. 
강한 키원입니다. 어, 캐리아 선수 오늘 정말 캐리아. 만족스럽다라고 느끼셨던 부분이 있으실까요? What do you think went well today, or maybe what was the favorite moment of Worlds this year? I think our preparations were really on point in quarters and semifinals, and because of that, we made it to the finals. Today, gameplay-wise, I'm not really happy, but my teammates were popping off. I can hear the crowds are saying no. I really appreciate that. 선수분들과 이제 감독 코치님들이 All the players, all the coaching staff were working hard in order to achieve this moment. So I am really happy and grateful. Keria, what is your plan heading into next year? Now that you're a world champion. All my teammates were, you know, speaking some fancy words, so I'm going to follow them. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy this moment for about a couple of days. And now, and then I'm going to get back to the grind, you know. I always have to keep working hard, so I wish I can keep on showcasing the best performance and best result possible to my fans. Now let's hear from Tom. The interim head coach for T1. 감독 대행으로서 월드 첫 우승입니다. 소감이 남다르실 것 같은데 어떠세요? How do you feel winning Worlds as an interim head coach, the first year leading T1? 우여곡절이 많았는데. You know, this year was not easy, but in the end, it's a happy ending. 일단 지금. So right now it feels just surreal and amazing. 사실 감독님이 고생 정말 많으셨잖아요. I can tell, you know. You and your coaching staff were working so hard because the drafting was the key point with you and Weibo. What did you focus on the most? We were, yeah, Weibo also had Danny. So we wanted to make sure that we can kind of be more thoroughly prepared for the matchup and compositions and draftings. Moving on to Roach, coach on the side of T1. Congratulations, Roach. How do you feel at the moment? When I was performing as a professional player or when I just joined T1 as a coach, I really wanted to, you know, be standing here once in a lifetime and I finally made it. You know, we only have seven people standing on stage at the moment, but not only us, but also Sky, our manager, our GM, all the staff on the side of T1 worked so hard and supported us and also our fans, because of their support and love, we were able to make it happen. Is there anything you want to say to the T1 fans? I think we were able to end the year on a very good note. It's a big relief. But we will keep, you know, going on. We will keep challenging for another title. So I will look forward to your continuous support. Thank you very much, everyone. I know all five players and also the coaching staff were doing a fantastic job winning Worlds today, but let's find out who is going to be the finals MVP, the OPPO finals MVP today. It is time to reveal the OPPO Finals MVP of Royals 2023. MVP It's going to be Zeus on the top lane. Congratulations. Congratulations, Zeus.
You won Worlds and you won the finals MVP. Were you expecting this? Last year, my opponent laner won finals MVP and I was watching him winning the finals MVP in the backstage. It was another year of me ending up being a, being a runner-up. I was like, well, this happened again, but I was like, maybe if I just keep working hard, there will be my moment. And somehow, I was able to make it happen in the end. I want to say thank you to my friends and family and also Khan who helped me so much during Asian Games. And also, of course, T1 and my players. And also, Bengi, who used to be the head coach of T1. And also, Zeus. Would you like to say anything to the fans? Yeah. Uh, I played so many leagues this year. It was really hard. But thanks to your support, I was able to keep myself motivated. I will make sure to always show the best performance possible for my fans. Once again, this is your 2023 Worlds Opal Finals MVP.